possibility of attending this session. Um, <clears throat> I'm in charge of the one man who is in charge of the archaeological service of Lower Saxony, but I changed sides because I spent five years of my life working for an UNESCO geographic site. And my idea was we have a management plan for the archaeological heritage sites and that is very elaborated. And of course, we are Germans, we have a very elaborated management plan for our natural sites. But we are Germans, that means people don't speak to each other because there are two <laughs> ministries responsible and you know your worst enemy is sitting on the other side of the road yeah. or the street. So, Lower Saxony means we have about 124 thousand archaeological find spots. We know about 24,000 who are visible and accessible. We have about um, 47,000 square, kilometer, square kilometers, about almost 8 million inhabitants. That means there are a lot of people who can possibly visit one of those spots. We have about 80 archaeological 80 archaeologists in public administration heritage service responsible for the whole country. That means we have areas where it is easy to get or where it is difficult to get. And we have about 15 or 20 companies who know how to deal with an archaeological excavation or can help us. That means we are outnumbered. We are not enough people. Um, and we do must see that we have about 1,400 1, castles and about almost 40 royal manors in our country. That is just one of the 16 so-called Bundesländer in Germany. So I'm just responsible for this area. You see we have a great difference between high mountains in the south and the coast of the North Sea in the north. That means we have areas with sandy soils and good and stone areas. We have an administration uh, that is uh, there's somebody who's responsible for the archaeological sites somebody is responsible for the man for the monuments that means for the standing upstanding we have somebody who are responsible for the jurisdiction and we have monuments that are owned by private persons by the state some of them are owned by the churches that means by the catholic or by the protestant church and some, some other monuments are owned by uh, communities, by so-called Stiftungen. That means people putting together their money to be more, to have a more financial power. And we have a lot of people who are interested, and all these come from various um, sites. And oh, sorry, we have to go one back. No. And if you are looking at the country. You see we have an area with almost no possibility of building an, a, 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 a manor of stone and we have just one third of our country there you can build a house or a church or a castle out of stone. That means if you look in the north you can see a castle that is from high nobility but it's completely built by wood and earth bricks in that. There will be never ever an accessible situation. It is just an archaeological monument. And we have in the south, we have one of the highest uh, castles. We have the so-called Große Hotzburg. That is a castle just lying here on the top of that hill that is completely built within in stone. It is an emperor's castle. And we must secure that people can visit both, both our places. They want to visit and need explanation to a place like that, or that was one of my excavations I've done. And also we do have places we have already a good touristic impact on, like this castle here where there's a, a rope you can get up, there are roads too, and a mountaineer way, so that is get quite easy. So we have a, a, a quite difference of, of, of tasks, how to explain a place. And we have a quite different, quite, quite different task how to protect these sites and how to monitor them, how to check if, they, they, if there's any um, issue that is uh, 
changing the system running on that place, and that is my responsibility. So we had we took my in the in the former times there had been the monitoring was done by aerial photography and the monitoring was done by generating special plans very very skillfully. Um, our institution used the contact to two universities, so we outsourced the task of getting a good measurement of the places. And that is really done for almost now uh, 80 or 90 years. But the status was we are content on having good plans every 20, every 30 years. Things changed when um, the service who is responsible for the public management of areas and the public measurement of roads and all the discussions about the ground in Lower Saxony, when this is their logo, when they decided, decided to do aerial photography and a LiDAR scan. And I asked them if we can get the LiDAR scans, and the, um, the answer was, of course, no, because we paid for that. It's our system, we are running it. And then they came back after a few months and wanted more information about archaeological sites. And I told them, okay, we can do that. You get the information about the archaeological sites, but that will cost. You do have to pay as much as I have to pay if I want to get the LiDAR scan. That is really a clear system. And then they went back and came back and said, okay, we can do it without any money transfer. That was I wanted to get to. That means now we get the LiDAR scan and we get the model that is done of the surface, but we also get the model that is done with all the forests and all places where there's no wood, and we get the information about the use of those areas. We never ever got this before, but now we have a very, very inf political influential partner with a lot of money because the ground of the, is ground is the most ground administration is, is the most influential branch, except the financial ministry. And so we got the possibility to have an archaeological inventory and looking on a inf complete information of the ground delivered by another institution for us. And we started, and now I will see, show you a one or two examples. That is a royal manor that was used in the 10th century. You see almost about 20 hectares. It is an has, a, has an inner bailey and two uh, outer baileys. We did a complete geophysical survey and we can show now that there are a lot of hundreds of sunken huts, of vaults and of, uh, of, of, of um, ditches. And we can show that the area was completely a pre in a pre-urban status. It was all the 20 hectares were completely used as an early medieval city. We have the geophysic, we have the area photography, we have of course the measurement, and we used items of the geopark and the items of natural conversation. We transferred this, the, the whole area into a natural protected area, not an archaeological site. It would be politically impossible to do that, that but using it as an heritage site or as a natural conversation place. That was possible. I got the political support for doing that. So we built up against the wall and took out of the ditches and we allowed two people to take their sheep there because sheep are talking down to uh, um, uh, the moon, moon hours and they, um, their feet, they the plus the, the surface. So it is kept and it is close. People coming there always have some, something nice to look at. And um, no, this way. And if you look at these places, we have spots of special archaeological interest. And I refused to do an excavation there. 
Um, I was accepted to do that, but we put more earth, stones, and some smaller trees on that to protect the archaeological site within the whole area. That means we generate a new landscape. And this new landscape is run by the, by, or is protected by natural laws, and it is protecting the uh, archaeological site of almost 20 hectares. So, and if you are, we now, we can explain the situation, for example, by the LIDAR scan. This is the area you see here on this uh, photograph. And we use the LIDAR scans, I mean, take the data from the LIDAR scans by flights with an UAV, that is an unmanned aerial vehicle. And we put two cameras down on, these, on the back of these, uh, on the, uh, of these UAV. We take normal photographs, and that is a system that is always done in the forests in Germany. But we also use um, an infrared camera. That means we, in the same, during the same flight, and that is a cost, if you, if you take a, uh, an, 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 an airplane, that costs thousands of euros, but you using an UAV is about 100 or 200 uh, euros and my time standing out, spend, spending out there. But in getting, we, in doing the same flight, we get a new, an actual aerial photograph, and we get an infrared photo. And in comparing them, that was done in November, and in comparing them, we see, or we get an impression if the vegetation is in a good condition or not. That means, and we, by this, we get a second impact if the archaeological monument is in a good condition. That means by using the same flight, the same time, the same people, the personnel and the same UAV, we get two photographs showing us the archaeological and the natural situation of the object. And if you have these photographs, you can compare them to the LiDAR scan. And for example, you see that when we made all the natural objects in 2050, and we did the uh, UAV flight in 2016, there already has been some erosion and some changing of the landscape. So I know in two or three years, we do have to check the situation. But the costs for doing that are less than 1,050 euros per year. So another royal manor, Königsdala, that is well known. Uh, both places are well known out of historical sources. You see the situation. We just have two aerial photographs from 1991 showing this situation and this situation. You see this house, is this. this is the inner bailey and the outer bailey was never photographed in another or in a better part than this. So we took the LiDAR scan as a new inventory and on looking to this LiDAR scan, you see it is true. The inner bailey was um, uh, destroyed by a place or by a manufacturer who, wa to, who wanted to gain stones for building new houses. And you see it is almost devastated. Just left are the wall and the ditch of the inner bailey and the royal manor. But the outer bailey was never, never ever photographed before. You see, somebody was allowed to build this barn that is used for, um, for, for pigs. And um, he, he never got the permission, but he already has done it. So we can't remove it because it is there. It, it is protected by, by its existence. And we made an UAV showing the situation right now after the crop was harvested. And you see the, the spurs of the machine. And you also see this way here. You see this dark part here and you see this. And in combining it with the LiDAR and the UAV photograph, you see also that the ditch is here and here's a second ditch. That means for the distant, not so distant future, we're talking about this area, we're talking about this area, 
but you see in the LiDAR, we have this yeah. one. Yeah. So we do have to extend the archaeological site. And now we see the, the monitoring that was done between 1991 and 2001 was not sufficient enough. We do have to change gears. Now, the last place I want to show is one of the most famous monasteries we have in southern uh, Lower Saxony, Valkenried. It is a Cistercienser monastery. They owned almost 30% of the whole mining areas in the Harz Mountains. There had been up to 400 monks and they were so wealthy and uh, the system was running a bit too uh, strong, so they'd been destroyed by a peasants' revolt in 1525. And since that, the, this is a ruin. The rest of the, of the monastery was used as a school, so it survived. We do have this old plan from 1667. That is an, it kept in our archives. But this plan keeps us the situation from 1667. And it was updated in about 19 and 1. Since then, never ever body, somebody updated the plan of the buildings and the condition of the buildings. So you see that is, we are desperate, desperately in need for an UAV flight to get a photograph and to check which of the buildings will, is still existing and in which conditions are their roofs. Do we have to repair or check for something like that? And if you look, we look at the, uh, at the monastery, we have several castles nearby. One is, is the most famous that was founded by the Emperor Heinrich the, I know, by Heinrich the Fourth. That is the Sachsenstein. We have it is in a very bad condition. It is in one of the high rankest uh, castles we ever have in Lower Saxony. You see the difficulties of access. You see that um, during the due to the climatic change. The old trees fell down and young trees grow up, so we, the, the site is not accessible anymore. But in using the LiDAR scan, we get a good impression. This site is this place, this round tower is that. So we do have, that is a modern railway road, and here you see on this place the castle. We do have, uh, have a new possibility to check the situation without a high cost and without the, the, the difficulties or avoiding the difficulties of accessing such a place. You see, that is one of my famous pictures. I really like that is done by the Belgian painter René Magret. He's very, very famous. And this picture is called the unanswered question. I mean, you open a door, but you get no solution. You get a un new unanswered question. Thank you for attending and your patience. Thank you, thank you.